On this edition of Exploring Idaho, swirling creeks produce stunning waterfalls. We'll go north to some of the most scenic in the state. Idaho deserts have a beauty all their own. Surf the sand at Bruno Dune State Park. And it's spring on the salmon. Flowers are wild and so is the ride. the unmistakable sound of spring. Water rushes through Idaho's rivers and streams, fresh from the mountain snowmelt. And here at Granite Falls in North Idaho, it makes a spectacular sight as it spills over the edge on its way downstream. This year marks one of the best water years in recent memory, and that's why Granite Falls and others nearby are as beautiful as they can be. Welcome to Exploring Idaho. If you're willing to make the trip to North Idaho, you'll find dozens of waterfalls within an easy drive. But you better act fast because this springtime attraction is at its peak for one short season. High in the Selkirk Mountains of North Idaho, a change is taking place. Warmer spring days are wearing away at this year's generous snowpack. Drop by drop, winter is giving in to spring. It doesn't take long before those drops become trickles. And then small streams, all gathering strength and speed on the way down the mountains to the Kootenai River Valley. And in many places, like on Smith Creek at Smith Falls, it creates a beautiful scene in its rush to the river. Smith Falls is unmarked, and not everyone gets a chance to see it. The owners like it that way since it sits on private property. But if you ask and get permission to walk to the falls, you'll find a hidden treasure. Surrounded by conifer trees and lined with large stones, Smith Falls spends the days of spring spilling fresh, clean water onto the creek below. Most other waterfalls in Idaho are on public land, one that anyone can walk to, the 70-foot-tall Copper Creek Falls. A well-marked trail system guides the way. The rumble in the distance lets you know when you're near. And then, like a giant natural shower, Copper Creek Falls sprays down water. Seems inviting, but you probably wouldn't jump in. This water is just a step away from snow. But look all you like. Can you see the rainbow? On a sunny day, hard to imagine anything more beautiful in the world. And here's an interesting effect. These perfectly round holes in the rock. They weren't drilled by humans. Small pebbles spinning round and round over thousands of years bore these perfect holes. After the falls, Copper Creek continues on to meet the Moye River. And here, hidden far below this suspension bridge, just past the Moye Dam, is Moye Falls. Drivers who speed past nearly 500 feet above 
have no idea what they're missing. From a better vantage point, you can see Moye Falls is actually two waterfalls. Fresh smelling pine trees frame the view. For wildlife, water is a key to life. And at the Kootenai Wildlife Refuge near Bonners Ferry, spring is a time to enjoy this new beginning. Here, more than 800 acres of wetlands provide food and habitat for hundreds of species of birds. Baby ducks are a common sight in spring. So are deer, elk, and other animals. And in the midst of all this, you can find two more waterfalls on Myrtle and Snow Creeks. Named for the myrtle flowers that grow in the area, Myrtle Falls shows off a bounty of water. Nearby, Snow Creek is one of the shorter falls of North Idaho, but the beauty of its setting is hard to match. cedar tree dares to grow over the falls from a bank, and large rocks are shaped smooth by the power of Snow Creek. Continue south and you'll meet the largest body of water in the state. Lake Pend Oreille is more than 40 miles long. From all sides, high mountain streams flow into the lake. One of those is Grouse Creek. A short quarter mile hike brings you to Grouse Creek Fall. Once you're there, this is your reward. Further south, beyond Lake Coeur d'Alene and almost to Dwarshack Reservoir, runs the clear water of Elk Creek. Named for the elk that live and thrive in this valley, Elk Creek displays one of the tallest falls in North Idaho. And that's not all. Sun filters through the trees on the walk to First and Upper Falls. Then a middle falls, dropping 90 feet. Then a lower falls. Call it three beautiful sights for the price of one beautiful walk. Signs make it easy to find your way. The sound of water lures you in. beautiful, isn't it? If you would like to tour North Idaho, but you'd like a little direction, a loop tour guide is available. It gives directions to six different scenic tours of North Idaho. It's a great resource. And later in the show, we'll tell you how to get your own loop tour guide along with other important notes for exploring Idaho. Next, you won't see an ocean, but there's plenty of sand and the surf's up at Bruno Dunes State Park. Welcome back. If a trip to North Idaho's waterfalls is a little out of reach, then spring is also a wonderful time to visit Southern Idaho's desert. In fact, it's the perfect time to visit Bruno Dunes State Park. There you will find the tallest single structure sand dune in North America. At 470 feet high, it rivals dunes found in the Sahara Desert. In fact, Bruno Dunes is called Idaho's Little Sahara. As the morning sun breaks onto the horizon, the birds of Bruno Dune State Park send out a shrill wake-up call. Except for the getting up clatter of nature, mornings are pretty calm on the dunes. Their slinky shapes meander across the skyline. But as the morning wears on, the 
the wind gets to work, leaving its imprint in the shape of each dune. With all this wind, why don't the dunes just blow away? And where did all this sand come from in the first place? Bruno Dunes State Park Manager Wes Whitworth is used to questions like that. 10 to 12,000 years ago, the Bonneville flood came through this region. It was the second largest flood in the world. And this was kind of a big eddy in that flood. And the water slowed down in that time and slowed down enough to deposit the sand. And then the winds have blown it in here into this natural trap that we call Eagle Cove here. The dunes don't blow away or even move around much because the wind in this area comes from two prevailing directions, approximately 180 degrees apart. The opposing winds play a game of tug of war, a game that never ends and that neither side ever wins. It's got a first footstep quality every time you come out. The sand erases everyone else's track, so each time you go up, it's like you're the first person that's ever been there. Even on a windy day, you'll find visitors to the park. The wind's incredible today. A lot of times you can come out here and it's not too windy, but the wind is what makes the place unique. Todd Olson's climb will be worth the work. His snowboard is about to become a sandboard. It's like the wettest, sloppiest snow you ever had. <laughs> it's really heavy, it's hard to turn, but you can get some good speed. And sooner or later, just about everybody ends up head over heels in all this sand. Yeah, you get sand in places you never knew you had. <laughs> if you have kids, plan on it. Undoubtedly, you'll take some sand home with you as a memento of the good time everybody had. Kids go crazy out here. They really enjoy playing on the dunes. There's a lot for them to do. They can hike through the desert, play on the sand, or fish in the lakes. It's just a really a beautiful location for kids. The lakes, of course, add a different outlook because you can canoe, enjoy the birds, the wildlife. We get a lot of migrating geese and ducks and the trumpeter swans. We get a few of those that come in here. And and rest. But Wes Whitworth's best advice is to take the time to sit and really see all the area has to offer for yourself. It's much more than a giant sandbox. Sand is very photogenic. The dunes are just uh, very subtle and very unique. The scenery changes everywhere you go in the park. We feel we are one of the major gems of the state of Idaho. It's very unique to the country and to the world. I think you'll agree, and you'll probably have so much fun you'll want to spend the night, and that's no problem. There's a great little campground at Bruno Dune State Park with 48 campsites available. We'll be right back. Get ready to get wet. We'll be back with a rocking raft ride down the river of no return. Good run. Hold your paddle. Imagine what spring must be like in the country's largest expanse of wilderness outside of Alaska. A Rocky Mountain sanctuary 15 times larger than New York City or Los Angeles. Well, you don't have to imagine any longer because we are about to take a raft trip down the Salmon River to the pristine Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness. the deep green of the ponderosa pines to the lime green grasses, the Salmon River comes alive this time of year. I think that there are opportunities uh, on the salmon in the springtime that you don't get any other time of year. One is, of course, the wildflowers. April is the time for wildflowers here. The canyon is green, and not just green. I suppose an artist might be able to describe 
that particular shade of green. I, the best I can do is to call it spring green. It's brilliant. The spring rebirth brings colorful wildflowers, breathtaking waterfalls, and an abundance of wildlife. Mixed in with the obvious beauty of the canyon is what a lot of folks will travel across the state and around the world for. And for those who have joined river guide Wayne Johnson on his annual trek down this famous river, it brings adventure along with the solitude. Spring on the salmon is a well-kept secret. Everybody forward. Good run. Hold your paddles. <laughs> Nothing to it. Springtime trips must be carefully planned between the cold weather and high water runoff. There is a narrow window of opportunity in April and early May. Then the water gets too high to safely run the river. But by mid-June, the most popular season on the salmon is in full swing. The salmon in the springtime is so unknown to people. It is so un unappreciated as a recreational activity that you really are alone out here. You really do have the river to yourself. He says this is probably what the pioneers who came down this river a hundred years ago saw. Awe-inspiring scenery and a noticeable lack of people. Today the scenery is just as awesome and the people just as scarce. The scenic beauty, uh, the peacefulness. I lived in salmon you know, all my life and I was just thinking, gee, many of you know, a person needs to do this more often. And I'd certainly encourage uh, you know, all the people of Idaho especially, this is a resource that's, that's right here in our backyard, and we need to spend more time. In. While the weather can be somewhat unpredictable, you won't hear many complaints. With the right clothes, a little weather is tolerable. Of course, a dip in the hot springs doesn't hurt either. It feels beautiful. It's wonderful. It, it's rough. This is always rough in here. This Everybody water is really nice. fun. Yeah. <laughs> the pace this time of year is pretty relaxed. When Wayne Johnson plans these trips, he makes sure there's enough time to take a few side trips to explore the history of the area. Jim Moore's mining camp is one of Johnson's favorite spots. Most of the buildings put up in the late 1800s are still here. In fact, a group of archaeologists is now working to restore this historic site. He built all these cabins by himself, with the exception of the one to my right here, his home. He had help from another fellow for about two weeks. But all the other cabins here he built by himself, except that he had two horses to help him drag the logs. This mining camp is a living piece of Idaho history, history that guides like Wayne Johnson keep alive by sharing it with their guests. It's more than whitewater. It's, uh, it's a time machine trip uh, for people to see and touch and feel and, and uh, have a personal experience with our, with our heritage. Paddle hard! Paddle hard! Very good. Okay, hold your paddles. You're wondering if you're going to flip over and if you're hitting it right and if your guide's <laughs> steering you right and if you're going to end up right side up, but it's always a thrill. It's fun. I love going through those rapids and um, no matter how cold it is, it doesn't matter because you're have, just having so much fun that it just doesn't matter. I like it up front. It's more fun. You get to see firsthand and you're just right there. Many spring trips end up in places like the China Bar Lodge. After a long day of rafting and sightseeing, a hot shower and warm bed are just the ticket. Throw in a late night bonfire under the moonlit sky and you've just wrapped up the perfect day. Paradise, found in the heart of Idaho's wilderness. <laughs> Summer is the most popular season on the salmon, so if you like sunshine and lots of warm weather, start planning your raft trip now. 
and grab a pencil because we'll tell you how to get more information on this and the other stories on Exploring Idaho when we come back. Welcome back. Now here's how you can get more information on the stories you've seen on today's show. Call 1-800-443-2461 and ask for the field notes for show number 124. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Exploring Idaho. We started our show with a tour of some of the most scenic waterfalls of North Idaho. But the Panhandle doesn't hold a monopoly on spring runoff. Before we go, we'd like to take you to a popular desert hiking trail just south of Homedale. It leads to an unexpected surprise. At first, Jump Creek Canyon looks like most of the desert canyons you'll find in southern Idaho. Weathered rock outcroppings tower above a small creek. A short hike upstream, the canyon narrows. Water splashes through a winding maze of boulders and spring greenery. Faint rumbling in the distance grows louder, and then through the branches up ahead, you see it, a ladder of glass shattering into a secluded pool. 